with my partner, Courtney Alexander. I'm Eric Collins. The cap is won by the homestanding Wake Forest Demon Deacon. And right away, you see the zone defense from Georgia Tech. And that's one of the things Eddie Manning was expecting with this group. Georgia Tech likes to use multiple zones as well as that man-to-man -man to mix up coverages defensively to see if they can get you deep into the shot clock and have you force up a bad shot. Wake Forest coming off a loss their last time out, which was Saturday down in Miami against the Hurricanes. And with six seconds remaining on the shot clock, we've got a jump ball. Possession here gives it over to Georgia Tech. So a fruitless possession for Wake Forest, and here come the Yellow Jackets. Six and eight in ACC play. Alvarado. DeVoe working it around the perimeter. Last time out for the Yellow Jackets. Big win against Louisville, but that was a week ago. Alvarado inside and scores. And that's where Jose Alvarado's been great since returning from injury, getting inside the painted area and causing problems for opposing teams' defenses. He's not always going in to score. Oftentimes finds his teammates, but when he finds a lane, he will definitely take advantage of it. Brown gets behind the defense. Maybe a goaltending call that goes unnoticed. Numbers. And now Georgia Tech will play even strength. Inside move, ball knocked away from Moses Wright. 11 seconds to shoot for Georgia Tech. Josh Pastor now in his fourth year. This team decidedly better at home than on the road. Just four wins in the 10 true road games they played this year. And what do we have? Travel. All right, Corey, put your feet to the fire. What are your uh, Ford keys to the game? Well, for Georgia Tech coming in on the road, they have their defense must travel. They have held their last three ACC opponents under 40% from the field. All three wins at home. The same defensive effort has to come here to Winston-Salem. And for Wake Forest, they have to live at the line. They lead the ACC in free throw attempts. They get 24% they get of their scoring from the free throw line, and they're going to have to have that here to try to get a win tonight. And they lost most recently against Miami. They didn't get the line at all, only 13 times. Danny Manning still grumbling about that. And now a personal foul. It's going to go against Michael DeVoe. Danny Manning. Six years now here in Winston-Salem. And, of course, Dave Odom being honored here tonight. Danny Manning telling us about his relationship with Dave Odom. Odom and one of the reasons why he is the coach for the Wake Forest Demon Deacons. Looks at Odom as a mentor, as someone he leans on for advice, etc. And, of course, when you think about what Odom had, the success here, a great mentor for Danny Manning to have in Winston-Salem. Danny Manning said he brings him to practice about once a week. Welcome wherever the Demon Deacons are. Well, and, and Dave Odom is well-respected all over the country. So any gym that he goes into, only gets respect, but none more so than here in Winston-Salem, where we've seen his likeness hung in the banners here. John D. Brown misses the three-pointer. One and three, batted by Ben. Last time down the floor, Moses Wright missed the two-handed flush. Would like that one over again. And right now, we're seeing both teams actually starting the game in zone. Not really fears the, the opponent's shooting, but you have to be very careful with all the and DeVoe, this backcourt, honestly, probably a top five backcourt in the ACC, and right now playing probably like a top two backcourt. And a foul going for the rebound is going to go against James Banks. Here's a good look at Josh Pastner. Hasn't been to the NCAA tournament since taking over down in Atlanta four years ago. 500, trying to figure things out, but coming off just a wonderful win, beating five team in the country. Last Wednesday, taking Louisville down convincingly. And this is a team that Josh Pastor really relied on to get him to the NCAA tournament, thinking it would be the case. But one of the things that's really hurt this group this year has been injuries, as has Danny Manning had to deal with with great force. So right now, both these teams really rounding into shape. This is only the 14th game that Josh Pastor has actually had his full complement of his lineup and his roster four together. Wake Forest first bucket by Brandon Childress and another foul called. Is it on Banks? It is. That's number two on James Banks, who is a big part of what Georgia Tech is trying to do. And James Banks wanted to take a seat now, but one thing about Josh Pastner, 
If there's anyone who plays guys with two fouls in the first half, it's Josh Bassett. He's been number one in the country at that for the entire time he's been at Georgia Tech. We will see James Banks back on the floor in this first half, but he can no, nowhere be as aggressive as he's been picking up those two fouls. D3, children, the misfires. Substitution for Georgia Tech. They lose 12 inches, taking out Banks and replacing him with Bubba Parham. Well, Josh Pastor is comfortable with Moses Wright playing the five position. And Wright, one of the most improved players in the ACC this season. A double figure score in the last seven games for him. So they're comfortable with him at the five position, but it does give up a lot as far as rim protection. Wright missed his first three shots here to begin the game. One and done, the misfire by Andrian White, trying to get him going. And out of control, that'll be another foul against Georgia Tech. This time it's on Jordan Usher. That ushers us to a commercial back in a moment. The tournament MVP. 107 points for Randolph, the highest scoring ACC tournament for three games. It may be the highest scoring ever, regardless of how many games. Honestly, best individual performance over that span I've ever seen. Of course, I was in a boot on the bench watching it up close and personal for the semifinal game at, against my Virginia Cavaliers. And, wow, shot clock winding down, and somehow the shot is made by And Andrea White, who went scoreless against Miami last time out, off to a good start here, knocking down the three, and he's a the three-point leader for the Demon Deacons this season. And looking forward to having a big night here and trying to find ways to get this team wins. Corner three up and down, the lefty Michael DeVoe breaks the seal. And speaking of knocking down shots, Michael DeVoe got off to a great start this season, cooled off a bit, but now he's back to his hot shooting ways, shooting 46% from the field, six in the ACC, averaging 16 points per game, and DeVoe has been the catalyst offensively for Georgia Tech all season long, and now with Alvarado back healthy, the two of them have put together a nice stretch here recently. Game just to tell you about from both sides. Georgia Tech now has Evan Cole onto the floor. Missed the last couple of games, did Cole. For Wake Forest, Ishmael Massoud and Olivier Saar into the game. And that's an up and down call on Saar. Left his feet, came down. Basketball still in his hands. That's travel. You went back to the pickup game on that up and down that's how we used to call it playing pickup as it's travel nobody says up and down anymore but i like that you took me back on that one <laughs> we would have called it that in 95. <laughs> showing my age it's okay mine too basketball was good back then too yes it was here's cole and he got bodied up he'll go to the free throw line so evan cole the junior from georgia will shoot a couple free throws He's in iffy position, 11 for 23 at the line on the year. And Evan Cole, missing the last two games with an ankle injury, actually was injured in warm-ups against Virginia Tech. I'm sorry, shoot-around for the Virginia Tech game. So missed that one, two back-to-back -back wins for Josh Pastner's group and great defensive efforts in both those games. And right now, Josh Pastner's team is playing his best basketball of the season. A lot of it has to do with the fact that he does have his roster back in time. But they've gotten the message that they have to be a defensive group. He's given them freedom on offense, but they still have to maintain the defensive level that he's had over the past three seasons. And it's going to be another turnover. It's an offensive foul called on Childress, trying to set a screen. And Georgia Tech has it back. Now the Yellow Jackets. They can block the basketball. Last six games playing very well. There's one non-conference game in there, but in their last five ACC games, they're three and five. You're not going to sneeze at that. No, they're not. And they're, of course, you're thinking about good competition. Wins over NC State, who's a possible NCAA tournament team. Virginia Tech, as well as Louisville at home, as you mentioned, the number five team in the country at that time. They started to slide for Louisville, who's lost now two straight. Khalid Moore into the game for the first time. Fires it up first time he touches it. Ball knocked away from right. Here comes Childress and Wake Forest. Childress into the paint, off balance, can't get it to go. A lot of contact on that possession. Most scoring first half, my goodness. But the officials actually allowing these guys to play. I like it, giving them opportunity to go out there and make plays, not blowing the whistle. Almost a steal in the backcourt. Jacoby Neath now into the game, controlling the action. Back, 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 back. Tory Johnson, senior from Chicago. 
directing traffic, looking for help. Saw. Still plenty of time on that shot clock. Contested turnaround in and out. Devon. Hesitation dribble got inside second field goal. Georgia Tech gets 60% of its points on two two-point field goals. They love to attack the paint. And you see a lot of that with Alvarado and DeVoe. Both these guys capable three-point shooters, but they love to get downhill. Both very good pick and roll players. Jose Alvarado, according to Josh Pastor, is probably the best pick and roll performer in the ACC right now. And I've got to pretty much agree. I think he handles the basketball pick and roll situations as well as anyone, not only for himself, but making plays for his teammates as well. Jacoby Neath, the freshman, with his first field goal. He's really come on as of late. Andy Manning said he probably played his best game of the year last time out against Miami. And Neath gives him opportunity to move Brandon Childress off the basketball at times, allow him to go be a scorer. And Childress, who scored over 1,300 points in his Wake Forest career, has taken advantage of those, averaging 15 points per game, but not having to handle the basketball as much and not as much pressure being on him to run the offense. Childress gets to the cup, and that'll be a goal 10. Score the goal, second field goal for the senior Brandon Childress. And just like that, we've got ourselves a one-point game. very shy when it comes to outside shooting. We show the number about how many shots they block per game. Four and a half. They have just a little bit more three-pointers made per game. They average 5.1 made threes per game, which is a low number. Well, their bread is buttered in the opposing team defense and attack you and put pressure on you at the rim. Josh Pastor knows where his team's strengths are and where their weaknesses are. Their weaknesses beyond that three-point arc. It's really two guys that they prefer to shoot the basketball from outside. That would be DeVoe and Alvarado. Other than that, they want to be driving to the rim. Georgia Tech, they bring back James Banks. He's on the floor with two personal fouls. We'll keep an eye on him. Ball knocked away from DeVoe. It stays with Georgia Tech. Shot clock doesn't reset. And we've got a reach-in foul. Moses right in the act of shooting will go to the free throw line. Foul is called on Masood. Olivier Saar coming up with a huge block shot on that possession. But Wright continues to pursue the basketball and finds a way to get to the free throw line. Knocks down the first to tie this game. Fun game for Moses Wright. Relatively local. He's a kid out of Raleigh. Enlow High School has produced so many wonderful players over the years. One out of two for Wright. Eight apiece. Neat over to children. And again, you see the zone from Georgia Tech, and it's not the traditional 2-3 zone, more of a matchup, and often confuses teams, especially the first time you played against them. There are many guys on this Wake Forest roster. This is the first time they've seen this Georgia Tech zone. Masood is fouled, and he'll go to the free throw line. This is something that you mentioned, Corey, would be important. Wake Forest trying to get to the free throw line. This is their first free throw, and it comes... Uh, Nine minutes into the game. And this is not, probably not the guy they were expecting to get there. Masu's shooting about 70% of his field goal attempts from beyond the three-point arc. So although it's six foot eight, he's more of a perimeter player. But Danny Manning loving him getting inside the teeth of that zone and find his way to the free throw. Good-looking free throws for the Wake Forest going to play without Brandon Childress for the first time. He catches a blow. Back into the game is Andrian But this is something that Wake has this season if they haven't had the pass. We had to play Childress primarily 40 minutes a game to have a chance to win. But with Neath coming in and Danny Manning growing more and more comfortable with the freshman part, you're able to rest Brandon Childress at times, give him a break, allowing him to be more efficient in games. Four in the 15 tries in ACC games for Danny Manning. And Danny Manning told us earlier today his team is playing better. They're just struggling to finish games. They're there with opportunities, just unable to win. A lot of it has to do with still playing with a number of young players that haven't been through this experience before. 
10-10. A couple of free throws from Alvarado. Neat. Drops it off for Sark. Got a right in that most improved category. Olivier Saar on that same plane this season. Saar's had some big games this year for the Demon Deacons. However, consistency has been an issue. But I've got to look at Buddy Behan at number one. Moses right two. Olivier Saar three on that most improved list in the ACC this season. Usher. You're tied at 8-8. Eight, eight. Tied at 10-10. Now tied at 12-12. Quick one and done. Masood in transition. Tight quarters. Steve Nass action running the baseline. Duvall explodes. Stays with Georgia Tech. And can Josh Pastner's team keep the momentum going after the huge win seven days ago against Louisville? And this is a team that's three and four on the road in ACC play. If they could get one more win, they will have their most wins on the road since 2007, 2008. So a team that's not you know, scared of coming and getting wins on the road. Started out the year with a big win at NC State and Moses Wright attacking the basket. Once again, you see that Georgia Tech is intent on getting two feet in the painted area and making you have to defend them at the rim. Two-point lead for the visitor. Sar made one a moment ago. This time bottled up. Quarter three white. Up and down. First three-pointer for Wake Forest. And this time White behind the line. Earlier, the step back, he was stepping on the line, knocked down the two. Made sure to get the feet behind the line on this one, but a great start for Andrian White. Now 50 made threes on the year for White. Step back, Usher rattles it through. That's a triple. And you talk about production in wins. The eight wins that Georgia Tech has had since Jordan Usher has been eligible to play. The transfer coming in, not unavailable to play until December. He's averaging double-figure points. Are you kidding? Beautiful swooping left hand with Saar. Oh, Saar has that in his game. He's got a lot of skills in his bag right now. Olivier Saar continues to develop as a player and getting stronger for Danny Manning in the Demon Deacon. I think I just saw Tim Duncan's ears perk up. He's like, what's that all about? <laughs> Get there is Moses Wright. Tim Duncan said, what's that little lefty swooping hook about? Let me see that again. White can't make it back-to-back -back triples. And now Georgia Tech's going to play four on five as Wright still tied his shoe. Now even strength. Banks playing with two fouls. Got to be careful. DeVoe left alone. Oh, that's a scouting report mistake. Absolutely. How do you leave Michael DeVoe open? Defensive breakdown right there. Danny Manning not happy about what he saw. But he was happy what he saw on the opposite end of the floor. Olivier Starr going with the lefty sky hook. Oh, gotta love it. Kisses the hand. Second half, Dave Odom will join us up here in the booth with my partner, Corey Alexander. I'm Eric Collins, and we have that to look forward to. All of a sudden, Wake Forest playing from behind. Georgia Tech has gotten hot. They lead by five. 7.43 remaining in our first half. And Georgia Tech has been able to do that. Three for five from beyond the three-point arc. We talked about this isn't a team that makes a bunch of threes, but when they're able to shoot effectively, it makes them even more dangerous, especially when they come in with their defense playing as well as it has as of late. Childress back into the game to run the point. Oguama also back into the game to play with Star at the same time. So big front line playing together for Wake Forest. Star just made a shot with his left hand, got swatted away with the right hand. With the shot clock down to four, we're going to have a reach in foul called against Georgia Tech. Foul is called on Jordan Usher, and that is huge. That is the third foul on Usher. I can't imagine a world in which he plays again here in the first half. No, I won't, we won't see him again in the first half. Josh Pastor doesn't have a problem playing you with two, but he won't play you with three. Knowing that he could put you in a position to where you're pretty much invaluable to them in the second half. So 
We won't see Jordan Usher again. But that's not as big of a loss as would be James Banks if he's able to pick. He picks up that third foul right now. If you're Wake Forest, you want to try to work it into the paint. Rebound ripped away. It's Wright who comes down with it. Georgia Tech, they've hit their last four shots from the field. Bubba Parham back into the game. Transfer from VMI. Picks up the dribble at the elbow. Now Parham has it back. Alvarado. Shot clock at five. Long two. He's had a nice first half. Shoot the ball real well. He has playing with a lot of confidence. Of course, a new father. Daughter was born the day after the Virginia Tech game where he put on a show. They talked to him earlier today about the birth of his daughter. He said, there's no way you can describe the feeling that I went through. Can people tell you about it? But it's nothing like it until you experience it. And right now, he is playing great basketball, inspired basketball. Talked about how focused he's been with his daughter on the way. Children being hounded by Alvarado. And almost a turnover. And it's going to be another help ball. So this time the possession arrow favors the Wake Forest Demon Deacons. And hopefully Alvarado is okay. Doesn't look like it. Jose Alvarado is as tough as they get. When you consider all the bodies getting on the floor for Georgia Tech. We've seen him bend a number of times where rarely will you see Jose Alvarado break. And you see going after basketball, a lot of blue jerseys getting on the floor, taking a hit. Looks as though he and Bubba Parham ran into each other. But it's going to take a lot more than that to take Jose Alvarado out of this game. Georgia Tech on a 7-0 run. They've made their last five field goals. Trying to throw it down with the yoke. James Banks is fouled. And James Banks will go to the free throw line and shoot a pair. And you have to appreciate that if you're a Georgia Tech fan, seeing James Banks attack the rim the way that he did. Oftentimes he's had trouble with finishing around the rim. But as athletic as he is, you want to see that level of play, him going over top of the defenders, forcing him to foul him if he doesn't come away with the two points. Foul called on Olivier Saar. That's number two on the Frenchman. Banks is first. Beautiful. Saar has to sit. He's replaced by Musius. A couple of beauties for James Banks. Now a nine oh run for the visitor. Whole lot of nothing right now for Wake Forest. This is where Musius can be really good. He has the ability to play off the dribble, very versatile at six foot eight, but guard skills. And you see, when he gets into attack mode, he can be very effective for Wake Forest in getting to where they like to be most back to that free throw line. Georgia Tech now has two players with three first half personal fouls. That whistle goes against James Banks. So Banks and Usher, both with three fouls. Well, we talked about how valuable Banks was to this team. He is the rim protection for Georgia Tech. Evan Cole will check in and replace Banks for the remainder of this first half. But we know that one of the things that Wake Forest wants to do is get to that free throw line. And they put so much pressure on the defense, especially coming up with the offensive boards off of free throws. Shondi Brown coming up with a big bucket. Bonus two, technically a three-point play that time down the floor for Wake Forest. Shondi Brown, a very good rebounding guard. Two double-doubles, points and rebounds for him on the season. And Shondi Brown, another guy who missed eight games this year due to injury. Danny Manning forced him to have him back in the line. Settles for a long two. The moon ball. Oh, that one was up in the Raptors. Came down true. First bucket for Parham. Lead back up to eight for Georgia Tech. Under five minutes to play first half. Home team has won each of the last seven games in the series. 
Brown. Hoping to get a whistle that never came. Rebounded in traffic by Wright. Numbers for Georgia Tech. Alvarado, the floater, scored the goal and a foul. And that's why Josh Pastner believes that Jose Alvarado is playing as well as anyone in pick and roll basketball. In the ACC, he's very comfortable with Alvarado having the basketball in his hand. Alvarado now with eight points. Chance to make it nine. You bet. Junior from Brooklyn, New York. Josh Pastor got him out of Christ the King High School. Legendary basketball school in New York City. Neath. Oguama. Children. Poked away by Wright, right into the hands of Alvarado. 11 point lead for Georgia Tech. They're in a 14 3 run. Cole the misfire. And it's going to stay with Georgia Tech. Yellow Jackets, the lead in the. An impressive facility, no question about that. And one of the things that was necessary for Danny Manning and his staff to be able to get here to help some recruiting, but also gives the resources to these athletes who work so hard representing this university. It gives them an opportunity to be successful. And again, walking through there and seeing everything available to them, of course, for me, I almost got stuck on the second floor while the food is. With the snack. With the snack. I saw your eyes yeah. like, absolutely. You know that's my spot. I almost let you and Steve Kirkland go on with the tour while I stayed behind with the snacks. But because the weight room was sitting there looking at me, I figured I would lay off the snacks or not. <laughs> well, Georgia Tech now in the bonus. So one and one for Alvarado. He hits the first. Alvarado has been the goods. Talked about him in the open. He's the first man in double figures. 11 first half points for Alvarado. Averages 13 and a half. And one of the things you'll see from Jose Alvarado, what he's done recently for Georgia Tech, he's been very aggressive offensively to start games, to get them going in the right direction. He's been more of a facilitator in the second half, but in the first half, he's been a guy going out and putting up double-figure points and putting pressure on the opponent's defense to let them know that Georgia Tech is here to play, and they're going to have to deal with him all night long. DeVoe, inside-out dribble, and he is fouled, and he lands awkwardly. Hopefully he is okay. Ah, that was a real ugly fall for Michael DeVoe. Well, Michael DeVoe already missing three games in ACC play due to an ankle injury. And right now, bodies on the floor. And it looked like his left leg was just caught underneath another player. Mm. The schedule to have free throws. We always hate to see body parts get tangled up, especially as players are going to the ground, and you see DeVoe getting his side, and he and Johnson mixed up, but you look at that left leg underneath the body of Johnson. Happy to see DeVoe up and walking on his own. Encouraging sign right there. And hopefully we see Michael DeVoe back in this game. And hopefully just more scared than anything else. Well, DeVoe is supposed to be the man shooting free throws. Will he be able to shoot them? Well, in this situation, Danny Manning can choose who he wants to shoot free throws. As Michael DeVoe will go back to the locker room to have that what looks to be left knee examined. And Danny Manning picking Evan Cole to go to the free throw line. So Cole on the year, 11 for 25. 44%. One and one. That's it for the catch of Danny Manning. Yeah, but if there's a rule that could be changed, in college, well, many rules that could be changed in college basketball, at least you could allow the team that has the injured player to be able to pick it. You almost 
reward the team for fouling in that scenario in comparison to allow Josh Bassett to send someone into the game. Maybe he's got a great free throw shoot on the bench and allow him to, them to go in and shoot the free throw. I think the thinking used to be, though, that you could kind of circumvent that if you could fake an injury and then your coach could pick who you want to shoot the free throws if you had a bad free throw shooter. Well, this is very true, but if you fake an injury, you also have to come out of the game. So if you're a bad free throw shooter but a good player, you still have to exit the game. <laughs> All right. You just saw the foul trouble right now for Georgia Tech. Not only did they have foul trouble, but also their leading scorer, Michael DeVoe, not with the team in the locker room right now being looked at. But one thing they have is Jose Alvarado, who's playing great basketball and continues to attack, getting into the painted area and finding his way back to the free throw line. We talked about how important it was for Wake Forest to get to the free throw line. But right now, Georgia Tech taking a page out of the Demon Deacons book and beating them at their own game. Two free throws for Alvarado, who has made all five, making all six of his free throw attempts so far tonight. Alvarado coming off an 18-point night against Louisville. I don't think he's hit the rim. He's seven for seven at the free throw line. Neath now running the point for Wake Forest as we've gone under the three-minute mark here in our first half. Childress with the touch. Musius, Neath, Oklahoma. And Oklahoma will go to the free throw line. This is something that Wake Forest would like to have more of. No team in the ACC attempts more free throws than they do. Average 23 free throw attempts per game. Odio Guama, freshman from Raleigh. Here's a message from Continental Tire. Two good looking free throws. Right now, the last two and a half of this first half, Wake Forest trying to find a way to pick up the tempo, see if they can force some turnovers. Oh, quick shots from Georgia Tech. They get one on that possession and gather the rebound. Now they've got to find a way to take advantage and try to play in transition a bit to make up this double-figure deficit that they're in. But turnovers, of course, have been the enemy for the Demon Deacons all season long. Costly one there on that possession. Six turnovers for Danny Manning's team, just four for Georgia Tech. Alvarado Parham in the backcourt. Moore, Cole, and Wright playing together for Georgia Tech. Parham thought about a 30-footer. Alvarado doesn't use the screen. Arm running the baseline. Shot clock's at one. And a shot clock violation. And another score is a turnover. Another strong defensive possession by the Demon Deacons. But down 11 right now, you want to find a way to put some points on the board, whether it's getting to the free throw line and then having to go to the center defense or attacking the rim. Either way, these offensive possessions here at the first half become very important. You don't want to go into the locker room giving Georgia Tech all the momentum. Ishmael Masood replacing Isaiah Musius. One I am for another. <laughs> I'm talking young people's language. <laughs> we'll exchange I am's later, all right, Court? Let's see what you did there. I'm hip to that. Neath is fouled. Jacoby Neath to the line. First foul. Called on Bubba Park. Neath, freshman from Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Not quite Chris Paul at the free throw line. 16 for 34 as a free thrower. Not quite Rusty LaRue. <laughs> Definitely not Rusty LaRue. Shout out to Rusty. Remember that 1994-95 championship team as well? No. Throw that fastball by yeah, that, that he would. Basketball, baseball, Rusty LaRue. One of the best all-around high school athletes. Oh, 
One out of two for Neath. Georgia Tech playing without Michael DeVoe. Had a bit of a scare a couple of minutes ago. Went back to the locker room. Has not come back out yet. Hey, there he's back. Good news. Michael DeVoe. Don't know if he'll return to the game, but he's back out on the floor at least. Well, he was watching you in the back and heard you call his name, so he figured he'd run out here real quick. Great anticipation by Michael DeVoe, though, because that was a pretty quick return. <laughs> Alvarado. That's a mismatch. Alvarado letting the suit off the hook on that possession. That's one where I would have expected Jose Alvarado to once again get inside that painted area. Oh, my! Neath met at the rim. Moses Wright got the ball, but also got a piece of Neath. I'm not sure which one is more impressive. The fact that Neath was going to try Moses Wright or the fact that Moses Wright was not having it. By the way, that's not a foul. <laughs> Great recovery by Moses Wright. Neath going to the rim. Moses Wright getting all ball on that possession. Here's some contact on the body. Neath one out of two at the line a moment ago. Hits the first this time. 50.7 remaining in our first half. Keep it here at the half. We will see that legendary 1994-1995 ACC tournament champion Wake Forest team honor. A whole bunch of the players from that team 25 years ago in the building right now. Eight-point game. Including Tony Rutland, who alongside Rusty LaRue had to play all the defense while Randolph Childress ran around and shot up all the basketball. <laughs> Had a conversation with Randolph and Tim Duncan before the game, going in the back talking both those guys, and Tim and I were teammates in San Antonio his rookie year. And so I asked him plain and simple, okay, you played with me for one year, you played with Randolph for two, oh. which one of us passed you the basketball in that stretch of time? Emphatically, the answer was me. All right. He looked at Randolph, we both saw Randolph with his arm in a sling and gathered the fact that he didn't pass us the basketball, but Randolph and I were teammates in high school. And of course, Tim and Randolph play together, but Randolph was a scorer. Two guys who will always be linked together from that 94-95 season. Always be linked together because their banners are next to each other in the rafter. And uh, way back when, 1995, it was Childress who took the key shots. He averaged four points more than Tim Duncan did that year. Although that Duncan, Duncan's sophomore year. Although Duncan shot 60% from the field. So those numbers support exactly. But Randolph did say that he was responsible for Tim being such a great offensive rebound. Moses right with two hands. Lead back up to 10 for Georgia Tech. And once again, attacking the paint for Georgia Tech, getting to the rim, drawing defenders and dropping it off. Beautiful finish by Moses Wright, but the pass was just as impressive. Shot clock is off. Georgia Tech has survived foul trouble. They've survived playing without Michael DeVoe, who is out with an apparent injury, but Brandon Childress may be getting some momentum back to the home team. Quickly the other way. Shot misses by Moore, and that's the way our first half draws to a close. But the big star for George, you know, what he did for us uh, can never be never be duplicated. And I don't think he was the right guard for us at the right time. And I, I want to just say this to you, Corey, and you, you can relate to this, but, you know, the most important, I've said this many times, the most important recruit we ever had here was Rodney Rogers because Rodney was the first. And he when he committed, and then about a month later, Randolph called me, he committed. I said, why'd you do that? He said, because when you got Rodney Rogers, I knew you were serious about winning championships, and I wasn't going anywhere that wasn't serious about that. So in talking about Randolph, yes. But we gotta, again, you got to factor in Rodney as well. And Coach, just someone who was around that window of time, and for people who don't know, Rodney Rogers, we talked about him as a player the way people talk about Zion Williamson right now. Okay. Bouncy. Left-handed, inside, outside player. He was everything. They, they were all good in their own way, but and on this basket right in front of us, one night against Clemson, I'll never forget it. We were playing really well at the time, and Rodney got a, a kind of an outlet. Uh, he got a, a, a rebound, and then two dribbles. He was to half court, and another dribble. He was up and pirouetting 360, and it was almost like the Red Sea swatted. It's still the best dunk I've ever seen. And as James Banks picks up his third, I mean, his fourth foul, actually, and already exiting the game here with only 30 seconds played in the second half. Coach, Eric showed me a stat. Tim Duncan played more minutes in a Wake Forest uniform than any player ever. Now, for a big man, 
How rare is that to see a guy like that? You coach Ralph Sampson, but to see Tim Duncan stay on the floor more than anyone ever in the Wake Forest uniform, how special was that? It, it was just the way I coached and, uh, and his particular body. Uh, he never got tired. I mean, he did. He was a great passer. In order to be a great passer, you got to catch the ball. He, he caught the ball first. He had great footwork, and uh, he didn't he didn't waste energies. I mean, he, he knew how to play, and we didn't run him all over the court and trying to get him to catch balls out on the perimeter and do all that. I mean, it, the game was played inside the lane for us, and uh, we had a means to be able to get it to him. And uh, was it special? Yes, Corey, it sure was. And uh, you know, he I think I think he I think he took that right to the NBA. Remember, he played 19 years in the NBA, and I would bet you that he would be as close to for a big man number of minutes. 19 years in the NBA, as well as he was here at Wake Forest. Sean D. Brown to steal the strip of Michael DeVoe, who's back on the floor. Good news for Georgia Tech. But it's all Wake Forest coming out of the shoot here in the second half. They are now only down by three. And another turnover. Wake Forest had it for a moment. Now they have it. Well, that's all we needed was to get Coach Odom up here into the booth and for things to start going in the right direction. Oh, Boy. and Childress is fouled by right. And he's fouled shooting a three-pointer. So we're going to have three free throws for Childress and an opportunity to tie this ball game up. It's the third foul on Moses Wright. Corey, you know we don't lose many games there. Or we didn't lose no, many you, you did games not. in this building. With <laughs> Coach, this guy right here, you remember this guy? Uh, my grandson saw that picture today. He said, Poppy, you got glasses on. <laughs> Just curious. It's been 25 years. You coached for dozens of years. How much connection does there remain between you and your former team, particularly the 94-95 team? Well, I've never been one that you know, picks up the phone and calls Tim Duncan every day. I just don't do that. Um, you know, I had my four years with him, and, you know, we're still very close, and he calls me when he needs me, and I call him when I need him. And, you know, uh, occasionally we have a moment uh, like this where we just, you know, we, we enjoy it. Of course, we got a picture there of Randolph. I see Randolph. Uh, That's what happens when you throw a lot. That's free throw. Yeah. That's I, the look you get. Uh, yeah, well, he's, uh, Randolph is much more intense than most players. Uh, and and uh, you got you got to kind of cool him down a little bit, but uh, Corey knows that very well. <laughs> Well, Coach, you still live here in Winston-Salem. I do. But also, you are very influential in the what is probably the best preseason tournament in college basketball, the Valley Invitational. Yep. And when you do that, of course, you normally take an ACC team each year. Right. You know, what do you do as far as that selection process? And you get the opportunity to go around and see a lot of the schools that you coached against and a lot of the coaches that still you coached against back in the day. We typically bring eight, play, uh, eight uh, teams over to Mallory, uh, Corey. And I, I, you know, in looking ahead, the hardest thing for me is to look ahead five years, which is what I have to do uh, because I sign them up, I contract them five years in advance. But the hardest thing is to make sure that five years, I've got to be convinced they're going to be a good team. And you know, with all this transfer portal and everything, that becomes increasingly more difficult. But that said, I tried my very best to get the, the best eight teams over there. And I think that's the thing that separates Mallory from these others is we don't have five really good teams and then three OKs. We've got, we've got eight that are just, I mean, they're really, really good teams. And that, that's, I don't want teams coming over here looking for uh, easy, easy wins or anything like that. So, you know, I just have to be very sharp in what I do, and it's hard. Uh, I try to get one out of each of the Power Five leagues, and and then, you know, you, you get the, maybe Big East, maybe the Atlantic 10, and certainly the league that uh, Gonzaga's in. We, we, we bring one out of there every year, so... I'm you know, the WAC. We can keep it going. The WAC, yeah. yeah. Western, yeah. Your yes. yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got you got the WAC. Uh, let's see, you got uh, Gonzaga, you got St. Mary's, you got BYU sure. right now. You got three pretty good teams. Uh, it's been a 9 0 run, folks, coming out of the shoot for Wake Forest. So something magical is happening here in your watch, coach. Well, I'll stay with it as long as they do it. Evan Cole with a chin up inside for Georgia Tech. Well, coach, and one of the things, you know, that we're going to get an opportunity to look at it, there's a shot of you after the 1995 tournament by yourself 
And that was your first ACC tournament championship, even as an assistant coach, right. to be able to win one. What was that feeling like for you when you finally were able to win that championship for the Deeks? Corey, I, I, I'll promise you this. I was like, from, there you go. I was, you know what I was doing right there? I was looking for this, my mother in the seat I knew she would be in if she were still alive. She had just passed away. And I sat there and I said, if she could only be back with me now. Because she came to so many games. And, of course, my next thought was find my wife because, you know, she still is with me every single night. But, uh, but, but that was the thing. I'm just, and, and then thirdly, I looked around and all of the victory championship stars Deacon fans, it was amazing. It really was. Well, Coach, I want to congratulate you and, and tell you that as an ACC lifer for what you did at the University of Virginia as well as what you did here at Wake Forest, the ACC truly appreciates you. I know I speak that from all the former players that you've recruited, that you've coached, that you've coached against. And we love you and glad to see your uh, face up in those rafters. Well, thank you. You were, uh, you were great. I, I loved uh, the area that you grew up in. I really did love that. Coach, thank you so much for your time. Enjoy your special night. Right now, Damon Deacons coming out of that locker room with their hair on fire. They have outscored Georgia Tech 9-5 to here in the second half and made this a ball game once again. And one of the other things they've done, they've overtaken that free throw battle. Now 11 for 15 from the free throw line and being more aggressive attacking the basket here to start the second half. Musius falling down, still hits up the window. And perfect example there by Zed Musius getting to the rim and having the strength to be able to finish. Georgia Tech going to single cover, and of course, without James Banks in the game, oh going, to, going to be tough defensively, but Moses Wright making up for it on the offensive end. This kid only played one year of high school basketball, but he's made it count. He is a stud. Nine points for Moses Wright. A couple of chin-ups next to his name. Olivier Saar hands it off to Childress, and a bad screen. Saar didn't mean to, but he got Alvarado right in the nose. Oh, well, second time we've seen Alvarado down, but definitely not out for Jose. Tougher than a two-dollar steak. But great to see Michael DeVoe back in the game here in the second half after exiting with the injury earlier. And you see oh my. Sar leaning in with that left shoulder, catching Alvarado. Taking it right in the chops, but, you know, again, we've seen this from Jose Alvarado. He's a junior now. We watched this from him for two years previously, and he just keeps taking these bumps, but it doesn't deter him from staying in attack mode, attacking the paint, and doing the job defensively. Michael DeVoe had a scare in the first half. Hasn't scored here in the second half since returning. He's got a sleeve on his left leg now. Childress coming the other way. Deacons down four. Long two. Off the back of the iron by Johnson. One and done. Rebounded by Cole. You know, we've got to give Georgia Tech some props for their response. Wake Forest came out on a strong run to start the second half. And the Cole with a two-handed punch. But the Yellow Jackets have done a great job of stemming the tide and getting back in, of course, attacking the basket once again. We've seen dunks by Moses Wright and Evan Cole getting to the rim and finishing it off to build the lead back to six for the Ram the Red. And a bunch of rim eaters. But the guy's getting up and down. And a three-pointer in that corner by the freshman Masood. He's got five points, one possession game. Who would have thought that Georgia Tech would have twice as many threes as Wake Forest? Well, Georgia Tech has been shooting the ball very well as of late. Struggled early in the year beyond the three-point line, but they've picked it up recently. We've got a foul on the floor. We'll have free throws. Here's the Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's in the net. Just a moment ago, Evan Cole, how do you do? And, of course, Jose Alvarado attacking the basket once again, drawing the defenders with the great vision to find Evan Cole, who does the rest. Cutting inside in the field goal. Michael DeVoe, first field goal of the second half for the sophomore. <laughs> Wake Forest playing from behind for the majority of this game. First of a three-game homestand. Chance to make a difference for Wake Forest. 
The freshman Neat off the window. And he has been impressive. We heard Danny Manning talking about him, raving about the freshman. But he has been impressive attacking the basket. And we know he has the ability to find his teammates. Oh, look at DeVoe. Back to back field goals, Michael DeVoe. And that's one of the things Danny talked to us about as well, is being able to guard your yard, keeping your man in front of you. And that's one of the areas where Georgia Tech has been able to exploit the Demon Deacons thus far, getting into the paint. Not much resistance at the rim. Wild shot with the left hand for Neath. And it's Georgia Tech ball. And Michael DeVoe, bigger than most guards in the ACC, goes about 6'4", 6'5". Troy Johnson in great position, but you see DeVoe with the body control to be able to recalculate and finish over the top for another two points in the paint. Strong, 6'5", 195. Alvarado, walled off, and draws contact. And that's just a smart play by Jose Alvarado. He goes to the basket. The scouting report, we heard Randolph Childress go over today with their team. When they go to the basket, they're going to pump fake. They're going to try to get you into the air. Brandon Childress right now talking to Olivier Saar about knowing that this is what they're going to do. But yet, Alvarado still recognizing the shot block is getting in the air, getting a body into him and getting back to that free throw line. Alvarado on an 8 for 8 at the free throw line. We have speculated that he has not hit the rim as of yet. <laughs> oh, I'm plank. There you go. All right, eight for nine, not too shabby. The announcer's jinx. Doesn't exist. Yeah, that's what the announcers that jinx people say. <laughs> Six-point lead for the visitors. Neath had his pocket pick last minute, got it back, throws a throw. I'll tell you what, Neath is doing a great job getting downhill as well. We've seen guards, and oftentimes, you know, Eric, you know this very well, in basketball now you see many people relying on the three-point line. In this game, we've seen a lot of guards who can attack off the bounce and beat their man to go make a play. Miscommunication, DeVoe throws it out of bounds. So wait for Neath. His teammates open on the outside. That's where Michael DeVoe has been special, knocking down threes all season long. But this is a completely different team with Jose Alvarado in the mix, averaging over 70 points on the road with him this year. And, you know, 9-9 nine and nine with him in the lineup and struggled mightily without him in the uniform. Neath starting the offense up high. Now the children to touch. Step back. Shot is short by Brown. One and done. Here comes Georgia Tech. Jordan Usher runs it across the timeline, hands it over to DeVoe. DeVoe and Alvarado have combined for 29 of the 51 points for the Yellow Jackets. And Josh Pastel told me pregame, he simply said, we've got to have two of the three guys. When you think about Alvarado, Harlem, and DeVoe, two of those three have to play well on the road for us to win, and they've gotten themselves thus far with Alvarado and DeVoe. Oguama called for the foul. It's on Moses right, and Josh Pastor can't believe it. His guys can't get out of their own way. And that's going to be four on Moses right, and now with you already having Banks on the bench with four fouls, and Banks with those four is going to check in for Moses right. At the 11 4 mark, one guy with four fouls replacing another guy with four fouls. Not ideal for the visitors. Wake Forest. Down by four, but playing better basketball. Dating back to the end of the first half, they've made 14 of their last 22 shots. Uh -oh. Masood with the misfire. The Danny Manning told us earlier he's not going to be bashful. <laughs> and when he gets his opportunity, he's going to let him fly. That one a bit off, but has a chance to get it back on the defensive end and is able to come up with a stop. But Wake Forest unable to gather the offensive and start the rebound. Alvarado misses from the corner. Here comes Children. Ten and a half remaining. Even Deacons desperately want to win on a special night here at Joel Coliseum. Masuda pass in tight quarters, and a foul is going to send Oguama to the free throw line. With great ball movement and nice aggressive take by Masood on that possession. Instead of settling for the three, putting the ball on the floor and finding a teammate getting into the free throw line. Oguama two for two at the strike. It's now the 24th start of the year for the freshman from Raleigh. Georgia Tech won last time out, but it was a full week ago. 
They had that bye over the weekend. They would have loved to have played to capitalize on their last win last Wednesday against the fifth-ranked team in the country, the Louisville Cardinals. But Josh Pastner did say that the bye actually gave him a day to be able to celebrate and enjoy the Louisville win. If they had to play on Saturday, he would have never had that time to be able to do so preparing for the next game. But with the bye, he got to sit back for a day and enjoy the fact that his team had just knocked off the number five team in the country. Duvall. Squeezing it through, James Banks. Give the assist to Duvall. Just four points for Banks. Average is 10. First basket for Banks after a couple of first half free throws. More points in the paint for Georgia Tech. Awful dribble drop penetration by DeVoe. Brown. Neat with catch in traffic. Hangs, hits, and he's fouled. And not only is he fouled, he just fouled out. James Banks. Oh, wow. And Neat has been aggressive attacking the rim in this game. And you can see the confidence drawing with the freshman. The nice move by Neat, the body control to be able to finish, and you see Banks does not stay straight. It's not vertical, turns to the side, which is going to be an automatic foul in comparison to, in comparison to going vertical. And James Banks, who had 20 points against Wake Forest a year ago in their only matchup, fouling out with only four here tonight. In only 11 minutes. Five fouls in 11 minutes. One point game. Georgia Tech already has dismissed James Banks. Wright, with four personal fouls, has to re-enter the game. Wright sets the screen gingerly. Oh, my! Nothing ginger about that for Moses Wright. The hammer is third of the night. But once again, initiated by Michael DeVoe getting into the paint. He and Jose Alvarado have had their way with Wake Forest defense attacking that painted area. Not all the time for them to score for themselves and a beautiful find for DeVoe to write on that possession. Sar off the heel. Rebounded by Brown, undercut by DeVoe. So now the foul's really accumulating for Georgia Tech. But as you move the basketball, you see the sprint screen by Moses Wright. No one there to protect the rim. And DeVoe with the nice find to Wright for the nice finish. Every Moses has never played basketball. It's been a great dunker. We got Moses Malone. Remember Moses Scurry? I do remember Moses Scurry. Playing UNLV yeah. back when they were dunking on everyone in the late 80s. Chance to make this a one-point game. Shondi Brown. Bullseye. Nine minutes and change remaining. Georgia Tech led by as many as 13 back in the first half. And the so it's all gone. Crowd now into the game, and all the momentum that Georgia Tech has had, you have to consider Wake has done a great job keeping this game close. But right now, it's important for the Demon Deacons to find a way to get a stop and try to take a lead, especially here on their home floor. Out of control, DeVoe is bailed out. Sean D. Brown, second personal foul. And now we'll have free throws for the lefty from Orlando. But Michael DeVoe and Jose Alvarado have been relentless attacking the paint. So DeVoe sitting on at 12 points will have two free throws when we return to not going to debate you on a broadcast featuring one of those teams. I'm going to throw it out there. But again, if you would debate me, who would you say was better? Uh, well, Carl Malone's in the conversation. Okay. Carl Malone is in the conversation. However, he was nowhere near the defender that this guy was. Okay. And at the power forward position, what are we calling Kevin Garnett? You calling him a power forward? You calling him oh, a Kevin Garnett was a power forward. Okay. Yeah, he's he's right. he's behind Tim Duncan. I love Kevin Garnett. But I can tell you right now, you'll get more votes for the guy with five rings than you will the guy with one. <laughs> <laughs> and two MVPs, by the way. Wake Forest with the ball, down a pair. Behind the defense. What a catch. Saw of the find from Neath, and we're tied at 56. Jacoby Neath has had a day. Already a career-high 12 points, now another assist. And with eight minutes to play, absolutely nothing's desired. 
But one thing we do know, the depth for Georgia Tech is limited with the foul trouble. And right now, if you're way forward, you want to continue to attack the paint because if you get Moses right out of this basketball game, things do get much easier for you moving forward. Oh, my goodness! Penny from heaven! Moses right just his seventh three-pointer of the year! And it beats the buzzer! He's got 14! And Danny Manning told us Moses Wright was going to have to make a couple of threes for them to really respect him out there. And he made a big one on that last possession. Georgia Tech looking for a miracle, handing the ball to Moses, and he delivers. Just as you'd expect. Yellow Jackets up by three. Trying to win their second consecutive conference game. The dribble penetration sets it all up. You see that they respect Alvarado and DeVoe so much, you have to double-team those guys, which means you're going to have to leave someone open. Oh, DeVoe is never in a hurry. This kid can score. 15 points for Michael DeVoe. And after tying the game at 56, Georgia Tech is now going on a 5-0 run. And you see this Georgia Tech team really starting to mature and grow up. Almost a stop right there. Unable to come away with the steal. And turn Brown! Sean D. Brown now in double figures with 12. And that's the guy you're going to have to get production from. If you're Danny Manning, you need Childress, you need Brown, you need Starr. All these guys to step up. And a big stop now, the opportunity to tie it or take a lead. Childress, lane opens up, scores! Seventh tie of the game. 619 remaining. Don't go anywhere. With his two point guards in the mix, and Neath doing a great job defensively as well as attacking the basket. And part of the reason why the entire front line for the Ramblin' Wreck is in foul trouble. DeVoe, sophomore guard. And a foul away from the ball. Called on Wake Forest. It's on White. Andrean White, first foul on the senior. And because of the bonus, we've now got a one and one for DeVoe. ACC this year, a lot of close games. 64% have been decided by single digits. A couple of good looking free throws for DeVoe. Georgia Tech back on top by a pair. Childress, Masood, Neath, White, and Saar. The five on the floor for Wake Forest. Masood splits a double team. And we're tied at 63. Nice play by Masood, and you see him developing on the fly. We talked about coming in close to 70% of his shots. Field goal attempts were three-pointers, but now he's made two great plays, one for an assist, and now one for a bucket, driving the basketball to the rim. A couple upperclassmen doing work, and Childress fouls Alvarado. Because of the bonus, it's going to be free throws for Alvarado. But when you know someone's a knockdown three-point shooter, you see two defenders rotating to Masood. He makes a smart play, putting it on the floor. No rim protection for Georgia Tech. He's able to get the easy layup. Still a one-and-one. One. Swirls it through. Alvarado now nine for ten at the free throw line. 19-point night for Alvarado. White hadn't been much of a factor for Wake Forest. Hands it off to Childress. Gets inside. Finger on the short. But Johnny on the spot. Effort by Olivier Saar. Brandon Childress getting to the rim, unable to finish, but Saar there to back it up. Not only finishing it off, but knocking it down. And you're talking about the best free throw shooting seven footer in the country with an opportunity to take the lead. Oh my goodness. 
That's not, that doesn't count as an announcer. He wants to pull over. <laughs> 65 all as we approach the five minute mark. Devoe. Silky smooth. Shot goes begging. Here comes Wake Forest. Five on four for the moment. Open look, Childress. And a touch foul called on Missouri. Reverse of the announcer's jinx? <laughs> I know you say it doesn't exist, but something's going on here. Two oh, yeah. beauties for Evan Cole. Something is definitely going on right now. A 47% free throw shooter stepping up and knocking down two in a row simply because Eric Collins talked about him being a poor free throw shooter. <laughs> And before the quarter three, they're going to say that White stepped on the sideline. Unforced error. That has been the biggest adjustment to the new three-point line in college basketball this season. Players catching it in the corner without the room to take that retreat step, stepping backwards and turning it over, going the other direction at a crucial time. 12 turnovers with Georgia Tech, only 10 for Wake Forest. But that's a big one when you're trying to stay on pace. With Georgia Tech. Well, Milano got away with a push off. It's going to stay with Georgia Tech. This saw coming over. And credit for coming over, blocking the shot. As you see the push off, saw coming up, denying the opportunity. Only 14 seconds remaining on the clock, on the shot clock. As the Yellow Jackets hold a two point lead. That's why he's our CPI security shot blocker of the night. From Toulouse, France, every time he blocks the shot, he says, excuse my French. <laughs> Georgia Tech up by a pair. They've got possession of the basketball. 14 or 417 remaining in our second half. Parham finds right. And now Duvall will go one on one. Duvall, so patient, misses inside, got it back, throws it through. Four-point lead for the visitors from Atlanta. 19 points for Michael DeVoe. Both teams in the bonus. Georgia Tech in the double bonus. Childress leaves it for Saar, who's fouled. Nice find by my nephew getting into the paint right there. And instead of forcing the shot, finding Saar. And we talk so much about Saar at the free throw line and how great he was a free throw shooter coming in. The highest percentage of any seven footer in the country. Had a clank last time. It wasn't good. It was not good. Makes the adjustment. That last foul on Michael DeVoe, his fourth. So Georgia Tech already has James Banks sitting, fouling out at the 11-minute mark. And now DeVoe and Wright both have four fouls. Saar hits a pair. There's Banks, who's dismissed with 11 minutes to play. And Olivier Saar has made more free throws than anyone in the ACC this season. So you have to imagine you're going to try your best to find ways to get him involved, especially with Moses Wright playing with four fouls. You would love to get Wright out of this game for the remaining three and a half. Michael Duvall, so patient, so good. Chance for a three-point play. When we talked about Devoe and his ability to use that six-foot-five frame to finish over top of smaller defenders, body control, and absorbing the contact to get the 21 points, an opportunity for 22 at the free throw line. Big-time prospect coming out of Orlando, and you can see why. Looks the part, and he can play. Ninth time this year he's had a 20-point game. It's an old-fashioned three-point play. Five-point lead for Georgia Tech. Childress, Brown, Knee, Saar, and White. The five on the floor for the locals. Three minutes and change remaining. Childress knocked off his course and a reach-in foul on Parham. 
because of the bonus free throws for Brandon Children. A great job by Brandon staying strong with the basketball. Took a couple bumps on that possession, but did not give up the basketball, stay strong, and now gets an opportunity to cut into this lead at the free throw line. You see 81.4% for Brandon. I'm going to go as far as to say, I think he's a better free throw shooter than his dad was. Oh. I hope his dad heard it. Brandon Childress and his father, Randolph Childress, the highest scoring father-son combo in ACC history. By far. <laughs> it's going to take a lot for that record to be broken. Brandon has definitely up upheld his last name here at Wake Forest. Over these four years and not done yet. Three minutes remaining. Parham. Alvarado. Directing traffic. Devol slides inside and scores again. But Eric, one of the things you recognize with Michael Devol, he's a knockdown three-point shooter, but he doesn't settle. Shoots 41% from beyond the arc. But you see. He is intent on getting closer and closer to the rim, putting that pressure on Wake Forest defense, regardless of them having the shot blocker in there or not. Lazoud lost it on the way up. Saar, and he's fouled. Olivier Saar back to the line. Who's that foul on? If that's Moses Wright, that's going to be foul. We see Michael DeVoe attacking the basket and finishing. But on the other end of the floor, offensive rebound. It was Moses Wright. That's going to be five on right. And now you're talking about Georgia Tech playing without James Banks and without Moses, Moses Wright on that interior. A much smaller lineup as Evan Cole checks in to play the five position. Good job. Georgia Tech trying to steal one on the road, but now playing without two of their best bigs. No Banks, no Wright. Jordan Usher streaks back into the game. So that front wall will be Usher and Cole for Georgia Tech, trying to protect the five-point lead as Saar with the misfire. One out of two for Saar. Isaiah Musis back into the game for Wake Forest. And Georgia Tech just is set with foul walls. Banks right dismissed. DeVoe in danger. DeVoe has scored the last seven points for Georgia Tech. He's got the ball in the corner. Back out to Parham. Usher. Extra pass. Oh, oh wonderful inside play by the two bigs. Great interior passing. And Jordan Usher averages close to three assists a game in the eight wins that he's been eligible for for Georgia Tech. A nice dive on that possession and more of a skilled player getting involved in that paint. Childress. Careless pass and it's a turnover. Oh, trouble for Wake Forest as they give it up down six. And you see Jordan Usher who plays a small forward position attacking the paint and recognizing the defense rotating over, dropping it off, knowing Evan Cole is going to be in the right spot. And Georgia Tech continues to try to finish out this game on the road. Josh Passler happy where they're at. Lead is seven for the Yellow Jackets. Masood, Neep, Childress, Saar, Brown. The five on the floor for Wake Forest. Brown, fouled. Two free throws for Sean D. Brown. And that's the right recipe for Danny Manning and his group. Continue to attack the basket. You've got the shot blockers out of the game and James Banks as well as Moses Wright on the interior for Georgia Tech. And also, if you're able to get fouled, you can stop the possession and set up your full court pressure. But they're going to have to find a way to get some stops for this remaining minute 32 in this game and finish at the free throw line if they want to have a chance to win this one in the end. Josh Pastner wants to get this game over and get on that bus. 
That last foul called on Jordan Usher, his fourth. So two Yellow Jackets have already fouled out. Usher's got four fouls. DeBoe has four fouls. Man side rebound for Cole. And another missed opportunity for Wade to the free throw line and not able to capitalize. It also doesn't really allow you to set up your full court pressure, even though they've slowed down Georgia Tech. And what do we have? Just stepping out of bounds. Alvarado trying to tiptoe along that baseline, ran out of room. But right now, Danny Manning going to go offense, defense, one eye in for another. Checking in and out of the game. Masood, the better three-point shooter. Lucius, the much better defender. Children. Loose. Run down by Usher. In a hurry. And Usher's foul. Childress got him. Usher 77% at the line. Oh, they get the foul on Sar. Wake Forest would have preferred it to be on Childress. That's now four fouls on Sar. String music for Usher. Wake Forest still with the pulse for run out of time. Final minute. Masood. Got it! Three-pointer for the freshman. That snaps an ugly streak for Wake Forest. Then a field goal in over four minutes of game time. But still find themselves within striking distance. Only down four. Neef doing a great job attacking, drawing the defense. And Masood at six foot eight has a, no problem at all shooting over smaller defenders. A lot of confidence for the freshman. And steps up and makes a big one for the Demon Deeks. 55.6 remaining. Wake Forest, they're back against the wall. If they can just force overtime, which is a big ask, you'd figure they'd have the advantage because Georgia Tech is running out of bodies. Already two men have fouled out, two other important players with four fouls. All right, quick timeout. Usher will inbound. Appears to be full court pressure applied by Wake Forest. Parham. Alvarado. And a foul on Children. But even with two makes here at the free throw line, it's only a two possession game. And if you're Wake Forest, it doesn't have to be a three. Still, a lot of time remaining. You can have enough time to be able to drive it to the basket. If Georgia Tech makes a mistake and helps, you kick it out for the three. Or you play the quick basket game, pick up twos, and hope that you can get Georgia Tech to miss free throw. Alvarado with his sixth 20-point game of the season, 17th of his career. Masood back into the game, replacing Musius. Two good-looking free throws for the junior, Alvarado. Six-point game. Neat. Locked at the rim by Cole, but a foul. So Neat will shoot free throws. But a good foul there by Evan Cole. Make Neat have to go earn them at the free throw line. Because if you make that quick basket with only five seconds going off the clock, you now give Wake Forest an opportunity to set up their full-court pressure without having to work to get into the basket. Go be neat to show me something. Came in averaging three and a half points per ball game. That's not been his night at all. But this is 13 right now with three assists in 27 minutes. This is that time of year where freshmen are no longer freshmen. When you have played, you know, 25 plus games in your first year and you're part of the regular rotation, you're not really considered a freshman anymore. You're expected to be able to step up and have games like Neat is having here tonight. We've got an official timeout. We'll be back here to Joel Coliseum in a moment. Upcoming. That last official timeout, uh, splitting hairs a bit, trying to add a little bit more time onto the clock. I think less than two seconds were added back on. So officially 45.7 remaining. 
Jacoby Neath at the line with his final free throw. Made one a moment ago. All right, he was iced by the officials, not by me. Yeah, I won't blame that one on you. Yeah. The timeout did affect. I think Wake Forest would have been happier with two less seconds and more of a rhythm to the second free throw for Neath. Agreed, because then you would look to be looking at a four-point game, and right now, if Georgia Tech is able to knock down both free throws, but as you mentioned, they did foul the right guy, Evan Cole, going back to the free throw line after knocking down two. Oh, man. Three in a row now for Evan Cole. Sure. Stepping up, making big shots. And this one right here, if he's able to knock it down, makes this now a three-possession game. So you're right, that last free throw for Neath, a big one. Especially if Cole's able to finish it off here. In and out. Two possession game. Needs in a hurry. Ball poked away by Cole. What a game he's had. With all the foul trouble that Georgia Tech has had, they needed a big performance out of Evan Cole, and he's delivered. And, and Neath has had a very good game, but an untimely turnover there. An opportunity to be able to cut into this lead, and now you can see Georgia Tech trying to stretch it out as many of the faithful here at the Joel headed out of the doors. Usher has one more coming. 32.6 remaining. Mentioned earlier that the home team has won in this series matchup in each of the last seven affairs. Looks like that streak may come to an end. And Josh Pastor, zero wins in this building. So right now, looking at picking up his first win in this building and also his fourth ACC road win on the season, which will put them at four and four, which is the most they've had on the road since 2007, 2008. Wow, that's the last thing that George Tech wants to do, stopping the clock. Cole has called for the foul, and Masood will go to the line. And Cole forgot to jump inside that restricted area. As long as you jump and stay vertical, then it won't be a foul. But if you do not leave the floor, it's an automatic call as a blocking foul. It allows Masood to put points on the board. First of a three-game homestand for Wake Forest. They'll have Duke coming up next. That'll be uh, next Tuesday, six days' time. Georgia Tech, they'll play over the weekend. They're going to head up north. They're going to take on the Syracuse Orange, who are getting thumped right now. Saw a partial a little bit ago. And they were losing big against Louisville. Well, Louisville kind of has something to prove right now. After two back-to-back -back losses, They've got to find their way. And speaking of finding their way, doesn't get easier for the Demon Deacons. A home visit by the number six Duke Blue Devils on Tuesday. And then having Notre Dame in this building, finishing up on the road at North Carolina and at NC State, two in-state rivals. So no easy sledding for the Demon Deacons heading down the stretch. Someone came up to me a couple of days ago and said, you see North Carolina in first place? And they showed me the ACC standings upside down. <laughs> <laughs> it's come to that. <laughs> it's come to that. Tough thing to Tar Hill this year, but Roy and his group will regroup. Not sure that this will be the season for it, however. Usher's been the goods at the free throw line. Four for five with one more pending. That may have slammed the door. Double-digit lead once again for Georgia Tech. Neath continues to have a wonderful breakout game. New career high for Neath. Alvarado speeds across the timeline, and a foul will send Alvarado to the line. I had an opportunity to speak with Jose Alvarado, James Banks III, and Moses Wright earlier today. We went through that remaining schedule, and this Georgia Tech team is looking to find ways to inch closer and closer up to that bye on Tuesday of the ACC tournament. Finished one through four, you get the double bye. Five through nine, you get the single bye. And right now, Josh Pastner's team is 
within range, striking range of getting into the top nine. And Jose Alvarado, very educated upon who has done what in the ACC, knows they have two wins over NC State, and that's the team that they're eyeing to make sure that they have at least a tied record with to stay in that top tier of the ACC. Brown double clutch. Cole the rebound, and that will do it. Nice roadie for Georgia Tech. Josh Pastner's club goes on the road, and they pick up an